Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I am taking a little break from work. Uh, figured I'd do some Bible studies. I am, uh, you know, I'd always hoped in the past that uh, maybe a small church would contact me and say, hey, Bob, we need a Bible teacher. How would you like to come here and teach? You know, I don't even need money. Just, you know, maybe a place to stay. I don't know. I, uh, I'm really learning to hate Florida. I have no family anymore, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I got two living members, but as far as I know, they're basically spiritually dead. One's getting ready to die physically. The other one, uh, there might be hope for her, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. All I know is I got no reason to stay here. Tired of the devils that live here and crazy weather. Of course, I don't think I could handle cold, extreme cold anymore. But, eh, whatever. This uh, Bible study is going to be a series on stones and rocks. Stones and rocks? Bob, or what are you talking about? Well, the Bible has a lot to say about stones. People used to set up, uh, Israel people used to set up stones as a uh, an altar. And, uh, you know, Moses actually struck a rock and water came out of it, as he was instructed of the Lord to do. And uh, the Bible makes reference to rock and stones a lot. Uh, you know, I find it funny that, uh, well, not really funny, but perhaps strange or interesting, I don't know, whatever, I don't know what the word would be, but when uh, we used to smoke weed, we'd say, oh man, I'm so stoned. And the word for drugs comes from the root word in the New Testament, a Greek word, pharmakia, which has reference to potions, drugs, witchcraft, and, you know, along those kind of lines. And those that practiced witchcraft and potions and drugs, uh, it was considered an abomination. And the Lord said that those that committed those acts were to be stoned with stones. And no, they weren't going to light up a joint. No, they were to be have uh, rocks thrown at them until they were dead. Now, what is the difference between a rock and a stone? Now, these are just some general ideas. I don't know if there's any... I, I had to look it up because I wasn't sure. So, these are just kind of general ideas thrown out there. One says a rock is not fashioned or shaped and has little to no purpose. Whereas a stone is considered a rock or a piece of a rock that has been fashioned or shaped or has a purpose. Uh, you've ever heard of gemstones? People take diamonds or emeralds or rubies and they cut them and shape them and stick them in rings. The uh, gemstones of the breastplates of the high priest had 12 stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. There were 12 layers of stones for the New Jerusalem. We'll get more into that later. I think I did a video on that, if anybody's interested in looking it up. But uh, a rock is considered large. A stone is considered smaller. Uh, and... Uh, you know, one thing I found interesting was if you look at the word jewel, J-E-W-E-L, 
Just remember, the word E-L, or the two letters E-L, has reference to God. So if you take the word jewel, J-E-W-E-L, take the first three letters, and that's saying that that's your God. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Hmm. And who's into that business? Yeah. Makes you wonder, right? Uh, jewelry, right? Yeah. So, some people worship gold and diamonds and rubies and emeralds. I don't know. I could never afford any of that stuff. So, and what do they say is the golden rule? He that owns the gold makes the rules. Unfortunately, that's uh, pretty much how it works today. So, all right, let's uh, take a look at stone and stones. And the last part of the series will be on rock and rocks. So, with that out of the way, let's get started. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 28. Uh, one thing I've noticed about the King James Bible is that if you pick a subject, in this instance stone or stones, uh, you click on first uh, the book order that it appears in. Let's see, uh, chapter order, they call it. The first time a word appears, generally in the context of the paragraph, it explains the meaning of that word and how it applies. Maybe not always, but more often than not, I've found that to be true. So uh, some people call it the law of first instance. So let's go to Genesis chapter 28 and verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beer Sheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of the place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. Boy, that would have been a hard rock, huh? Hard pillow. Well, obviously you put something on top of the pillow, like some clothing or something to... Make it soft, right? Me, I always loved feather pillows. I always loved them, even as a little kid. Uh, let's see. Verse 12. And he dreamed. And behold, a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angel of God, angels of God, ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Children. 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth. Does a few million of them over in the Middle East uh, count as dust of the earth? A few million? I don't think so. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in, thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So does that little country in the Middle East bless all the countries of the earth? Boy, I'll tell you what, I don't think so. And behold, I, the Lord, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, 
How dreadful is this place! There is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and he set up a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. Hmm. Now, oil in the Old Testament, olive oil, was indicative of the Holy Spirit. Uh, every time they anointed a king and the Spirit of God came upon him, it's because a prophet poured oil on his head. So, and what do you do with your head, your brain? You, you think. So they wanted him to think the ways of the Lord. And did you know that olive oil is, was used uh, in lamps? Yes, you could stick a wick in olive oil and light it, and it would give light. Light of the world, right? Oh, yeah. You know, I just find people think, oh, this Bible, you know, is just written by men. I don't think so. Well, I know so. It wasn't written by men. I mean, it's just all the threads go together. All right, so 19. And he called the name of that place Bethel. Beth means house. El means of God. It has reference to God. So Bethel means house of God. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God be with me, and will be with me in this, in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment, or clothing, to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give thee, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Now, I don't know how true it is, but there is a legend that the British coronation stone, they call it the Stone of Scone, S-C-O-N-E, uh, it's the coronation stone of the kings of Scotland and England, and they say that is Jacob's pillar. I don't know how true it is, but it wouldn't surprise me. And sadly, the British... Scottish and Irish people, they don't even know their history anymore. So, yeah. Now, this is not going to be a comprehensive study because, you know, you could take a single subject and talk for hours about it. And, you know, but I'm going to hit the high points. And if you really want to go in depth, you can read the entire chapter when I, you know, read a verse from it. Um, Genesis thirty-five fourteen, And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone. And he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 49, 49, and I'll see where to start. Uh, I recently did a study on this. I don't remember where it is. You know, I have well over a thousand Bible studies I've done. And by the way, if anybody's interested and you want a copy of all my work, let me know. Send me a USB drive or an SD card or something. Uh, if you're overseas, please don't send me a USB drive. Let me send you an SD card because I hate going to the post office and having to fill out a customs form, standing in line for half an hour, and then it getting lost. Whereas I can just put an SD card in the mail and a letter and mail it. And uh, usually it gets through. But I can't believe a school that I went to in California, well, correspondence, um, took three weeks to mail me some certificates. Twice. Yeah, I've taken a lot more than a few classes with them. Um, three weeks to go from California to Florida. I'm like, really? Twice. Twice this has happened. Used to be a letter mailed from California would be three to five days. Tops. 
Now it's three weeks. I guess it's diversity in action. I don't know. America is turning into a third world country. So, all right, Genesis 49, verse 1. And Jacob, now remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The words Jacob and Israel are interchangeable. And Jacob called unto his sons, the 12 tribes, and said, Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So, are we in the last days? I don't know. Wouldn't surprise me. But I don't set dates. I leave that for the false prophets. Um, Matthew 24, his apostles, Jesus' apostles asked him, uh, you know, tell us about the last days. Jesus said that not only did he not know, but neither him nor the angels in heaven knew the day he would be come back to get his bride, the church. Only the Father would know. Only God the Father would know the day. So when somebody tells you they know the day, you know they're a false prophet. Unless, of course, they're God, the Father, which I don't think so. So I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to you in the last days. Verse 2. Gather yourselves together and hear ye, sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. See, Jacob and Israel, same sentence. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. The firstborn was always, uh, this is Bob's commentary, but the firstborn was always given a double portion in the inheritance because he was to be uh, the one who took care of his parents until they died. So he was to get a double portion of the inheritance. And the firstborn was always belonged to the Lord, which is why uh, the Lord killed the firstborn of Egypt in the Passover, the first Passover. Firstborn always belongs to the Lord. Uh, I was the firstborn of my father. Maybe that's why I don't know. Do Bible studies? I don't know. But I didn't get a double portion. That's for sure. So Reuben, verse 4, unstable as water, thou shalt not excel, because thou wentest up to thy father's bed, then defiles, defilest thou it. He went up to my couch. Reuben uh, did one of his father's uh, women, a concubine. I, I don't know. I don't know if he forced her. She tried to seduce him. I don't know. Either way, uh, Daddy, when Reuben was started showing an interest in women, Daddy should have found him a wife or something. I don't know. My opinion. Then again, maybe he forced her. I don't know. Bible doesn't tell you. Verse 5. Simeon and Levi are brethren. Now remember, Levi was the tribe that is to become the priests. Instruments of cruelty are in their habitations. Uh, you know, it makes me wonder, were they, did they settle in Spain? Spanish Inquisition? That was really horrible. I don't know. Verse 6. O my soul, thou came not into their secret, unto their assembly, mine honor, be not thou united for in their anger they slew a man and in their self-will they dig down a wall cursed be their anger for it was fierce and their wrath for it was cruel i will divide them in jacob and scatter them in israel verse 8 judah this was the king's tribe judah thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies Hmm, he's going to be at war with God, uh, his enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Why? Because they're going to be the tribe of the kings. Do you know that 
virtually all the European royalty, their kings were of Germanic extraction. Oh, yeah. If you take a look at ancient Hebrew and old Germanic uh, script, their writings, their alphabet, I'm talking the stuff from the time back Martin Luther, like four, five, six hundred years ago. Those letters look a lot like Hebrew, if you ask me. And I was in Germany for about a year and a half when I was in the army. It was a duty station. I was near Stuttgart. And uh, German people I had a lot of respect for. They were very nice. Germany was clean, safe, at least that was back in the mid-70s. I hear it's not that way anymore, but diversity is our strength. Uh, I hear Arabic is a very widely spoken language now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it took the entire, almost half the entire world to knock down Germany in two wars. Verse 9. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Personally, I think Germany is Judah, or at least some of them. Oh, I remember now. Uh, Germany and uh, they try to, the modern church world will tell you Germany is Assyria. I don't think so. Assyria took a large part of Judah captive. And then when the Assyrian Empire collapsed, when Babylon attacked them, uh, Judah and Israel fled north into what is now Europe, according to history and the Bible. And I've done studies on that. So I think Germany is Judah. But they'll try to tell you, oh, they're Assyria, because they came from Assyria. But the Bible clearly says that Assyria took the fenced cities of Judah. Uh, they tried to take Jerusalem, but the Lord killed 185,000 of their soldiers in one night. One angel. Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. The scepter was what a king would hold. It was a uh, like a baton, and it signified royalty. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Shiloh, to the best of my knowledge, has reference to peace. Shiloh Shalom. I think the you-know-whos mispronounce words, so we don't, uh, we don't catch the connection. Shiloh Shalom. I think it's the same word, but... I think Jerusalem was called Shiloh. I'm not sure. Uh, who's the king of Israel, uh, king of Judah and Israel? Who gave us the law? Who will be gathering unto the people? Christ. Verse 10, this is a reference to Christ. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Binding his foal unto the vine. Remember, uh, a foal and an ass Jesus rode into Jerusalem on. Binding his foal unto the vine. And the vine was always referenced. Israel was called a vine. Jesus said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. Remember? Binding his foal unto the vine and his ass's colt unto the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. Hmm. Aren't our clothes going to be washed in the blood of Christ? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, wine was called the blood of grapes. Uh, let's see. Verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. 13. Zebulun shall dwell at the haven of the sea. 
He shall be an haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar is a strong ass crouching down between two burdens. And he saw that rest was good, and that the land, that it was pleasant, and he bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path. And by the way, an adder was a very, very dangerous, venomous snake. You get bitten by an adder, and there's a good chance you're going to die. An adder in the path that biteth the horse's heels so that his rider shall fall backward. I have waited for thy salvation, O Lord. Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at the last. Out of Asher his bread shall be fat and he shall ro uh, yield royal dainties. Uh, I guess that's good crop growing area, I guess. Naphtali is a hind let loose. He giveth goodly words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. The archers have sorely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. And his bow abode in strength, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob. From thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. From thence is the shepherd. Who was the shepherd of the sheep? The church was likened unto sheep, and Christ said, I am the good shepherd. And they're talking here about fence from fence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. Hmm. See, there's a this is Genesis, the beginning of the Bible. There's a lot of um, prophecy in the Old Testament. People don't even know it. Even by the God of thy Father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with blessings of heaven above, and blessings of the deep that lieth under, blessing of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of thy Father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors under the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, and on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. Benjamin shall raven as a wolf in the morning. He shall devour the prey, and at night he shall divide the spoil. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is that, and this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them, every one according to his blessing, he blessed them. Now, if you look at the New Jerusalem, it has twelve gates. Each gate has a name for one of the twelve tribes of Israel. There is no 13th Gentile gate. Or if there is, can you show me where it's at? Because I can't find it in my King James Bible. Maybe it's in the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan, but it's not in my King James. So, all right. Let's, uh, let's see. It's been 30 minutes. Maybe I will stop here. Yeah, I think I'm going to stop here. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.